how to spot a shitty coach. I'm sure this will apply to many different sports or arts. I mean, there's exceptions to pretty much all of these rules, but not all of them. I was blessed, actually. I was really blessed to be working with such a great coach from the get-go, Bill the Butcher Mahood. Such a, a gangster, he was really, really amazing. And this was one thing that he was about from the get-go. The number one way for you to spot a bad coach is a coach that will not allow you to learn from anybody else. If they're trying to keep you all to themselves and they talk shit about every other coach in the world and they're like, oh, you can't work with that guy, they're no good at this, and this guy's no good at that. Like they say, think that they're the best at everything. They have all of the knowledge that you would ever need to succeed in that sport. Okay, that's a real big red flag. Nobody knows everything. I would love to think that I knew everything, but I know that I don't. I know a lot. I know, I really believe that I do know a lot about mixed martial arts and all the specific arts or, or individual arts that we can apply to mixed martial arts. I've discovered a whole lot and it's somewhat hard for me sometimes to see my guys like go to this gym or go to that gym and work with that guy, but I know it's necessary because there's no way I know everything. There's no way. Even if the person doesn't know MMA like I know it, maybe they know boxing in a way that I don't know boxing. A lot of times my guys will go and work with specialists in these other fields. They're gonna know things I don't know about that specialized sport that then you can go and apply to MMA. You really have to be very secure as a coach, right? And that's something that we're gonna hear a lot about is security. If you're insecure, as a coach, it's a real bad look because you're gonna end up perming your students in some way and not allowing them to develop to their fullest, right? So that's number one. It's a horrible thing. Bill always let me work with anybody. He told me who to work with. He's like, yeah, you gotta work with this guy, you gotta work with this guy. He helped to set me up at other places, right? And I try to do that the same thing for my guys. It's better for them to learn from as many people as possible. And then if you're able to do that as a coach, okay, then your student's never gonna actually lose, you, leave you. They'll always be trying to get your perspective on things and sometimes you might end up as more of a consultant. I feel like this happens to me. The higher level my guys get, almost the, le the less I work with them. They're starting to work more around the community and training at different gyms, sparring with different people and then they send me their rounds or I'll go to watch some of their sparring sessions and I'll give them the, the keys because they don't need everything from me anymore. They just need to understand how to put everything together, right? So as, as my students start ascending, it seems like I'm a little bit more of a consultant which is the exact same thing that happened with me and Bill. Number two way to know if your coach sucks is if they whoop on you all the time and don't help you fix the problem. If they are constantly knocking their students out, hurting their students and showing that they're the best in the gym, that's a real bad sign. If you go into a gym right away and you see the coach just whooping on people, that's a bad sign. Right? Like I was saying before, most of this comes down to insecurity. So if I, for one, didn't really go anywhere, if I didn't really do anything, if I never really achieved my true potential, I might be a little insecure about that. I might wanna really show my students like, no, I'm, I'm really good. You need to work with me and you need to train under me. You know that because I'm wrecking you every day. I know how to beat the crap out of you. So if I know how to beat the crap out of you, that means I know a lot. If you need to mess your students up to prove to them that you know what you're talking about, it's a problem. You're not gonna produce high level talent like that because you'll wreck everybody. It's, it's a sport that wrecks people regardless. We're trying not to injure each other and we injure each other. If you're just going out of your way to wreck your students on the regular, they're not gonna make it to many fights, they're not gonna go very well. That's a very, very, very common trend 
in MMA. I see this very often. Last tournament we went to, I watching this kid and his coach warm up, sparring to warm up, which is already kind of like, mm, that's not a good look. You probably shouldn't be sparring right now, right? And the coach is like double this poor kid's weight, little skinny 19 year old kid. Coach is probably like, like bigger than me for sure. Just jacked all like wide V frame, right? And the coach is just like, Bang, bang, whack, kicks his student in the head. Kid gets a split lip, he's like bleeding everywhere. I felt so bad, man. I just wanna like take this kid and be like, bro, like you need to come with us. Like that guy's terrible for you. You never work with him again. You're part of our team now. If you're that kid out there, come to TriStar, okay? If you're that kid that your coach is getting, is whooping on you all the time, come to Tri TriStar. I'll beat you up in a nice way that helps you learn and doesn't wreck your body, right? That's kind of what we do here. Number three way to know if your coach is not the right coach, if they try to steal the spotlight. If you're in an interview and your coach is trying to like get in front of you and talk to the camera, if like your coach is holding pads for you and as soon as somebody comes around, they start doing all this real fancy stuff and like, it's like all about them. They're just showing off all their moves and oh yeah, I can hold pads like, like this, I'm a ninja. It's like, eh. It's not about you, bro. It's about the fighter. Like, people are gonna know you're good by how good your fighters are. It's not about you. Like, take a step back. Again, insecurity. If you haven't really attained anything, if you haven't reached your highest potential, if you don't really believe you're that good, you're gonna try to get everybody to look at you and give you that feedback, right? That's that like narcissistic trait. This, this number three actually brings us right to number four. It stems right from it, and this is not consistent with all coaches, but number four is coaches that have never competed. That's usually a problem. Now there are some coaches that have just been looking at the sport for so long and thinking about it for so long, practicing it within the walls of a gym for so long that they have a lot of really, really good input, but they never actually competed. Most coaches that never actually competed don't know what the hell they're looking at. They don't know anything about the sport they're coaching. They know very little anyway, and they're missing a whole bunch of stuff. Okay? And that will lead a lot of times to insecurity. If you've never really done it, you, you don't feel secure within yourself. You feel like you have something to prove to the world. You have something to prove to your students. You have something to prove to the people. You have something to prove to yourself. If you're operating from that kind of mindset, number one, two, and three are gonna happen. You're gonna mess your students up. You're gonna not want them to go anywhere because then if they go to another gym, they'll learn from a coach that actually knows what they're talking about, and then they're not gonna wanna work with you anymore. Why would they? You don't know anything. You never did anything, so why would, why would you be able to teach them? Imagine if I was a driving instructor, but I'd never driven. I just watched my mom drive me around. Bro, imagine if that's how our society operated. That wouldn't be a thing. That's not, it's not we're gonna have crashes all over the place. People are gonna be getting their license and running into walls and shit. Like, it's gonna be terrible. That's happened sometimes in sports where the person has never done it, yet they're coaching it. And it's kind of crazy. Not all the time. There are some coaches that have competed very minimally, less than you would expect, and are able to coach at a very high level. John Danaher is one of those people. He hasn't competed much, but for some reason, his brain is just so great at understanding problems and solving them that he's become a phenomenal coach, one of the best coaches in the world. Faraz Zahabi has competed, but he never competed at a really, really high level. Like, he never fought in UFC. He never even fought professionally. He had amateur kickboxing fights. He did jujitsu tournaments. He never even had one MMA fight yet. 
He has incredible insight into the sport of MMA and is a great coach. That's the exception that proves the rule. That's not discounting the rule in any way. There's many coaches that I've seen that just wanna prove themselves to their student, to themselves, to the world by doing number one, number two, and number three. Okay, number five, if your coach is fat, out of shape, incapable of completing the movements that he's telling you to do, that's a pretty big red flag. Okay, that, and you, that goes for like personal trainers and everybody. There's a couple exceptions to this rule. Sometimes people get injured, right? And then they put on weight and they're not able to be on the mats actively. But if you're a really, really, really good coach, you're actively learning on the mats. I'm training six days a week. Normally when I'm not injured. Right now I'm injured, I got neck and a rib, so I gotta like chill for a little bit, but it's like hard for me to chill. If I wasn't able to train and learn through training, I wouldn't be able to test anything, right? I'd be like, oh, here's this thing I think might, ha might work in my brain, and then I'd tell my students to do it, and they have to test it, right? but I can do it myself because I'm on the mats every day, right? Like I just figured out this new triangle and then I taught it to my guys like three weeks before Ali's last fight, right? Ali Wasuk, his last fight, he did this really weird triangle. It's this judo triangle we've been working on, right? It looks kind of like a reverse triangle, but it's actually a side triangle. And he hit it in his last fight, choked a guy out, right? And I learned that by being on the mats. I had learned it maybe a month and a half before. I, there's no way I, had, I would ever know that if I was fat dude on the side, eating popcorn, just yelling at people, hey, you put your hands up. Hey, work harder over there. Hey, do this, you do that, right? And not actually working on the mats with the people. It's way more impactful to be here on it. If any of these things are happening, you probably have a coach that's questionable. If like two or three out of the five are happening, you definitely have a coach that's questionable. If you, you're checking every single box on this, run from that gym, come to TriStar, where real fighters are coaching the next generation of real fighters, right? Even if you don't wanna like actually do this in an amateur or professional level, why would you wanna learn from some dude that is just watching YouTube videos and regurgitating them? Why wouldn't you wanna learn from somebody that's actually done it? Why wouldn't you want the best knowledge, right? I see so many people going to these gyms that like, yo, your coach has never done anything. Come to a place where real fighters are coaching, even if that's not TriStar. There's a lot of gyms there's a lot of gyms that have real high level ex UFC or ex professional MMA fighters that are now coaches. The newer generation of MMA fighters are turned into coaches now. At first it was all specialists. He was like a kickboxing guy that was teaching an MMA gym, a jujitsu guy that was teaching at an MMA gym. Now, most of the MMA coaches actually competed in MMA. And so it's a huge benefit to be able to learn from people that were already putting it all together. This, the, the blueprint is already there for you, but only if you actually walk through those doors. I hope this helps you make the right decision. If you're one of those kids that's getting messed up, come on down. We'll take care of you. Peace out, people.